Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I just wanted to start sharing my thoughts on a few things. And I've got a couple of topics saved up that I'm going to do a video here and there on. Just uh, have some Let's Play going on in the background. Show you some of what I'm doing in a couple of other games. And talk about some things that I've noticed. Today's topic is conspiracy theories. Now, everybody has a guilty pleasure. I don't care who you are, there is something you do that the rest of the world, or most of the rest of the world, would consider completely idiotic. And my guilty pleasure is conspiracy documentaries. Mostly, I listen for the laughs, because honestly, these people are hysterical. There are so many things passed around that are objectively idiotic. And now, you know, some of them may raise some good points. You know, there's the... Uh, the ones I've been watching recently are Aliens... The one I watched yesterday was Aliens on the Moon. Alien Structures on the Moon. And this is the one I'm going to be taking examples from for this little chat. But, um, you know, I've watched other ones on massive government conspiracies behind the JFK assassination and all this other stuff. And it's really funny to listen to. But, you know, the majority of it is just nonsense. And... I just wanted to point out a couple of things, which I'm sure you guys have thought about before, but just stuff that I look at, it, it's funny. It really is funny, and I kind of pity the people that listen to this kind of thing. So, one of the things that I notice about this Alien documentary is that it is hilarious how much you can prove with a highlighter and Photoshop. Because these guys, they will take a picture of the moon that is in relatively low resolution and i find it funny that they pick those photos because there's high resolution photos available how many hundreds of privately owned telescopes ground-based are available that can take extremely high resolution pictures of the moon's surface but no they don't use those pictures they take the low resolution nasa releases from the original film and they try to pull all of this information out of them and you know, there's digital noise because a lot of times it's a digital archive of the original photo. And, you know, there's all this other error that can be introduced. And then they look at these photos and they highlight areas. They take a clean photo and I'll look at the photo and you don't see anything. And then they're like, oh, but you should look at this area. And they highlight in three different colors and they color a building onto the surface. And you know what? Yeah, it looks like a building. But you made the building. You painted it there. So, you know, that's one pet peeve that I've got. It's just, it's funny to me. I, I listen to it and it's like a lesson in logic. Because if you think logically, none of this, n none of it makes sense. It just doesn't make sense. And there's two main things that I wanted to point out that I find really cool. I I would source the, the, um, the material that I got this from if I could remember it. This has been something that I read years ago. And I believe it was associated with a logic class that I took in high school, but I'm not 100% sure. But we, I, from what I remember, we were talking about conspiracy theories, and this has stuck to me with, to this day. Um, there's two things that feed conspiracy theories, and both of them have to do with human nature. And the first one is fear. Humans naturally fear a lot of things, and sometimes they're not exactly logical. We have, you know, the the stories of Slender Man. We have horror stories in a multitude of genres that tell all of these tales that just incur great fear. And it's not anything to do with logic. It is an emotional reaction. And as a society, we fear certain things at certain times. And this feeds directly into conspiracy theories. Let's take the JFK assassination. When it originally happened, when... Uh, well, right after it happened, we were going into the Cold War and we were in the Cold War and uh, all of that was escalating. So at that time, all of the conspiracy theorists were, this was something to do, you know, with the Soviets or this group or that group. And, like, it's it's all the communists. The communists killed JFK or these idealists killed JFK. And then we move out of that and we get to, you know, this, that and the other thing. And then today's world, you know. Uh, the fear is big government. Everyone is afraid of the government. What government it is, or if it's of another country's government, or I don't know. But they fear the central powers. They fear government. 
So now it's the JFK assassination was an inside job and we should be terrified of the implications of this. And that goes into the 9-11 conspiracy theory too because, oh, it's an inside job. Well, and, you know, it, it's fear-mongering. And a lot of humans that don't necessarily have the logical thinking skills or were not taught to think logically, they buy into fear. And it's just a self-perpetuating feedback loop and whatever comes up that day makes lot makes sense to you because it's playing to your fears. And it can be over a series of decades, it can be 10 different things that conspiracy theorists will come up with about one certain situation and they're all treated legitimately. And it, it is genuinely funny to me. Actually, that directly pertains to the Alien documentary that I was watching because... They were saying that the JFK assassination happened 10 days after uh, John F. Kennedy requested information on alien contact from NASA. So the theory was that the, uh, the agencies in charge of covering up alien contact were so concerned about it getting out that when JFK contacted them asking for information, their solution was to assassinate him. And... I, not gonna lie, I almost fell out of my chair laughing. That was so funny to me. Anyway, so fear, that's one reason. The other reason runs deeply into human nature. Um, humans tend to move towards thoughts that lead them to a higher power being in charge. And, you know, at there's atheists, I know. There's agnostics, I know. But if you look at percentage-wise, the entirety of the world's population, the natural disposition of man is to assume that there is a greater power than us in charge of the world's events, and we can't do anything about it. And we should, you know, cater to the power or... Realize that the power is there and fight the power. How, however they react to it, there is a greater power. And that's God to some cultures. That's many gods to some cultures. And then where conspiracy theorists are concerned, people just aren't able to accept the fact that maybe it's just a random occurrence. You know, uh, going back to the JFK assassination, was it one guy with a lunatic or, or one lunatic with a gun? I mean, people don't like to accept the fact that, you know what, there can be one guy who is completely out of his mind or instigates a set of circumstances that are beyond his control, and the domino effect just takes it to cataclysmic proportions, and, you know, all of the world's events are touched by just a few people doing something, or a single person doing something, and... People don't want to admit that. And that's even like the 9-11 conspiracy. I don't remember the amount of guys, however many are in the terrorist group, if it was, you know, 30 or 50 or whatever, that planned out this plot to take down the trade towers. And it people don't want to admit that a tiny group of people with funding from a religion way out in the Middle East... And I, I'm using generalized terms here. I know it's way more complicated than this. But people don't want to face the fact that a small group of people can bring a nation of 350 million to its knees in a day. Uh, they don't want to admit that. So they look to, oh, there was it's an inside job from the government trying to instigate all of this other stuff that's happening. And... We have to look at what's really going on behind the scenes because there always has to be a behind the scenes. And it, it's just funny to me how that's the natural reaction of a lot of people. You can have individual circumstances. You can have um, coincidences that happen. And, you know, whether you believe in providence, whether you believe in happenstance, or whether it's just a lunatic with a gun, you know, sometimes stuff happens and you can't do anything about it. And there's no real deeper explanation, but people are going to look for a deeper explanation. Anyway, hopefully something I said here will spark some, well, hopefully we won't have a rage war in the comments section. I know there, there's a potential for that, but I would just encourage everyone to think logically. 
please be logical and don't don't live in one segment of into of the intellectual population don't isolate yourself read widely read from a great many sources and watch diverse things take part in a bigger conversation because when people isolate themselves and i don't care if it's a group of conservatives isolating themselves inside glenn beck's radio show or if it's a group of conspiracy theorists only watching certain shows on discovery or whatever group it may be if you only listen to the same thing all the time you're going to think like that the human mind warps to conform to its surroundings we are peer driven uh creatures and we're going to conform to what we hear around us on a consistent basis so i would just encourage everybody to engage with as many diverse opinions as you possibly can and make an informed decision about everything and maybe you can join in with me and laughing at the conspiracy theorists because i get a load of entertainment from watching these uh quote documentaries unquote and just laughing at how how gullible some people can be <laughs> and i'm gonna insult everybody with that one but anyway that is my ramble on conspiracy theories. Hopefully something in it was mildly entertaining. And if not, maybe you enjoyed the uh, deck playing out in the background. I'm just getting into Hearthstone. Actually playing it some with my fiance. She has gotten into that. Actually playing a little Magic the Gathering too. And I did not think I would enjoy it. But it is actually quite a good time. If you haven't tried it out, go ahead and uh, try it. Maybe hit me up. Username is Brinko Insanity, Just like in the YouTube channel. I would be more than happy to play you. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.